All right, so as elementary education majors, you will all, of course, be expected to teach to literacy objectives, right? That's going to be one of your primary roles, actually. And so uh, what I want to take a look at today is how you can use music to teach towards those objectives so that you can put the two together in your classroom. Even if it's your dream to become a kindergarten teacher, in the beginning of the year it will still be expected that you're teaching pre-literacy skills. So all of you are going to be responsible for that in some respect. I know that you've been learning how to teach uh, rhymes by rote and from notation. So what we're going to take a look at is how you can use rhymes and songs as kind of more source material to pull from in encouraging your students reading skills. So what I want to start off with is I'm actually going to role play here. I'm going to play elementary teacher and I'm going to ask you to play elementary student. So if you can just humor me you can take a break from your college mindset and I'm going to ask you to start off as uh, kindergartners. So take a moment to transport yourself into the world of five-year-olds. You can do it. All right, cool. Yeah, it's a good age. Um, so I'm just going to introduce you to a song, and for now I will sing a line, and I'm just going to ask you to echo me. So sing after me. Charlie over the ocean. Charlie over the ocean. Charlie over the sea. Charlie over the sea. Charlie caught a big fish. Charlie caught a big fish. He can't catch me. Can't catch me. Excellent. Thank you for being brave singers. Sometimes that intimidates people. Good. We're going to sing the same thing again. And this time, I'm just going to point to each word as we sing it. It's okay if you're not sure what the word says. Just watch me point. Charlie over the ocean. Charlie over the ocean. Charlie over the sea. Charlie over the sea. Charlie caught a big fish. Charlie caught a big fish. He can't catch me. He can't catch me. Good. How many times did I go through each line? Yeah, I love she's showing it to me. Thank you. Twice. So I sang all the text once and you sang all the text once, right? And I was pointing to each word as it came up. Is there a brave kindergarten student who can trade jobs with me and you be the pointer and I will sit in your spot? You do not have to lead the song. I will lead the song. Ah, he's the brave one. Thank you. I'll trade spots with you. I'll still lead the song and you're just going to show us that you can point to each word as it comes up. Oh, excellent. All right, here we go. Charlie over the ocean. Charlie over the ocean. Charlie over the sea. Charlie over the sea. Charlie caught a big fish. Charlie caught a big fish. He can't catch me. <laughs> he can't catch me. That's all right. You've got it. Excellent. Now take a look at the. Uh, yeah, you can clap for him. <laughs> take a look at the text in front of you. You've seen me follow it. You've seen him follow it. Now it's your turn. So would you please put your finger on the first word that we're going to sing? And remember, we do each line twice. So when you come to the end of a line, go back to the beginning of it. Here we go. I sing, you echo. Charlie over the ocean. Charlie over the ocean. Charlie over the sea. Charlie over the sea. Charlie caught a big fish. Charlie caught a big fish. He can't catch me. He can't catch me. Excellent. So that's the conclusion of you being kindergartners. In real life, I would have introduced the song one day, pointed myself for the next two or three days, then had a volunteer point, and it would have been, you know, five times into doing this that you would have pointed on your own. Uh, all right, so let's fast forward. You're going to mature one year. Congratulations. You hit your kindergarten graduation, and now you're first graders, all right? So first grade class, I'm going to sing a song for you. I want you to take a look at the text while I sing it. You're going to echo me, and I just want you to watch and listen for a pair of rhyming words. Don't shout them out at the end. Just watch and listen for them and hold on to them in your memory. Charlie over the ocean. Charlie over the ocean. Charlie over the sea. Charlie over the Charlie caught a big fish. Charlie caught a big fish. He can't catch me. He can't catch me. If you think you know the pair of rhyming words, touch your shoulder. 
If you're not sure, touch your knee. All right, <laughs> congratulations, gifted and talented class. You are all there. In the real world, there'd be some people with their hands on their knees, and that would be OK. Excellent. So would someone identify the pair of rhyming words for us? Yes. Thank you. So we've got C and me. They both say E. What I'd like you to do now is discuss with one or two people near you a pair of rhyming words that you're going to create that we could plug in to replace this pair. It's OK if they don't make sense with the text. If they do, great, but it can be silly. Discuss with someone near you. All right, can someone give us a pair of rhyming words? That we can sub back in. Yes. Charlie over the limb. He can't catch him. I like it. So limb and him, they both say M. Charlie over the ocean. Charlie over the limb. Charlie caught a big fish. He can't catch him. Excellent. And then I tell you to all go home and think of rhyming words because someone else is going to write the text to our song tomorrow. And without knowing it, you would be going home doing homework for me and you think you're just having fun playing with a song. Right? Okay, so congratulations. You made it through first grade. We are going to go and advance to the second grade level now. So now we're at the second grade level. You're using the actual paper in front of you. I want you to take a look at this paper because we're learning about parts of speech. And I want you to search through this text for a verb. Would someone please identify for us a verb? Yeah. Excellent. So we've got caught, so it's a past tense verb. Can someone give us another verb that we could use and replace caught? Did your idea go away? Yeah. All right, take a second. Someone else give us a past tense word. Did I hear fought? We're going with it. <laughs> Charlie fought a big fish. I like it. Charlie's fierce. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, would someone identify for us a proper noun on the page? Yeah. Charlie. Charlie. Let's give Charlie a new name. Give me another proper noun. Could be a celebrity. Could be you. Yeah. Cindy. So Cindy fought a big fish. I love it. Cindy over the ocean. Cindy over the ocean. Cindy over the sea. Cindy over the sea. Cindy fought a big fish. Cindy fought a big fish. She can't catch me. She can't catch me. And I changed our pronoun. Good. Okay, so congratulations, you finished the second grade. You can return to being college students now. Um, what I'd like to do is have you look through the rest of this packet and with somebody near you, uh, I want you to glance through these teaks that I've printed out for you. The first page is the kindergarten level, English language arts and reading teaks. Next page is first grade and the next page is second grade. And I want you to just star or highlight in some way identify which objectives we have addressed. So we started off following along with our fingers. Then we pulled out rhyming words, then we pulled out parts of speech. Does anyone else? Okay. You can do it yourself or you can discuss with someone else. It doesn't matter.
All right, I know I haven't given you a whole lot of time, but let's check. Uh, at the kindergarten level, there's a couple different things that we addressed. What do you think? What did you see? Yeah. Yeah, so we recognize that spoken words can be represented by print for communication, right? In our imaginary world on day one, you wouldn't have seen the print. But then by day two, I would have introduced it. And so you would know, oh, this thing I heard, it also exists in the visual. And here's this symbol system that represents it. Good, what else? Yeah, one-to-one -one correspondence between spoken word and printed text. So that was the point of pointing to each word. Your kindergartners aren't reading Charlie Over the Ocean, most likely, at the beginning of the school year. But they can start to absorb the fact that every time a different word is sung, the next word is pointed to. So they're starting to make that connection of, oh, this thing represents that sound, this thing represents that sound. Good. I think there's one more on this page that we address part of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so we know that words are separated by spaces, so they see kind of the conventions of written text uh, and how things are printed out. And also, we don't address all of it, but we kind of address the second half of F, knowing that reading moves from top to bottom, left to right. When you are putting your own finger on the page, you would not have been successful at that task if you hadn't started to absorb that sequence of, oh, here's how it moved. And you learn that first from seeing me do it, and then seeing our student do it, and then doing it yourself. Cool. What do we see at the uh, first grade level? This one was less complex. Yeah. So, OK, there's a couple things going on here. We do have things written in English by a specific sequence of letters. Um, we definitely have the generation of rhyming pairs, right? So your job there was to create your own sets of rhyming pairs. Um, and that one, where is that one? I just lost track of it. Yes, there we go, 2A, we've also addressed generating a series of rhyming words. And especially, we could have dragged that out for a long time, right? I had one person offer one pair of rhyming words, but you could get a lot more material out of that. All right, second grade level, what do we address? The parts of speech stuff, right? <laughs> um, you don't have to spell them out one by one. And we could have gone a lot further with that, right? Kind of a Mad lib style. We could underline each part and then replace it with something else. And it feels like play. It feels like a game. But it's getting done what you need to get done uh, and doing it in a way that might connect with students differently than maybe just a simple text without a melody or rhythm. What questions can I answer for you about this process? Are you seeing how there's kind of material here and you just kind of have to get creative about mining it and, and meeting your objectives in that way? So I know that with Professor Adams, you're learning uh, all these different ways to teach musical uh, content. So now you can also think about the ways that you can extend that content in order to address the other things that you need to address in your classroom. And that'll connect with students in a different way and it'll offer a breadth and a depth to the material available to you. Um, so that you just have this expansive repertoire of uh, literacy pedagogy. All right, thank you. That's all I have for you.